And he's like, no, we'll drop them off and deliver to you. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> It's, it's, it's true. And I also just use it as a tool to get bigger orders. I, when I'm doing little deliveries to my chefs, hey, how are car levels? How are things going? Hey, did you guys run out this week? Right? Especially in those initial four or six weeks when you do the drop offs, well, you're established those car level. When I come into, you know, anticipatory of, you know, Christmas season or function season or Easter a month before, hey, guys, coming up next month, uh, how are you guys looking for events? Do you do separate menus? Do you want a new product? You know, just being, you know, proactive in that nature, right? Because for me, once, you know, September hits typically in normal years, you know, that's Christmas season and, and September through December. So I'm reaching out literally in August. Hey guys, planning for the fall. What are you looking at for your, like when I was in my industry, I'm booking Christmas parties in April, right? So these guys know their numbers, relatively speaking. So I'm based, because I have to, I increased probably like in 2019, we probably doubled our farm in phrase from September through December, just hmm. because double the orders right so we knew that was coming so we anticipated obviously last year was different but that's just where that's going to be the industry you guys are going to focus on you want to know the industry so when's function season great it's warm weather now we're coming into patio season now they mm. have 50 covered on the patio so they've doubled their capacity so now they probably need to double their levels right so knowing that aspect of the business model on their end really helps you gauge your talking to them Hey, chef, yeah, weather's getting warm in this couple of weeks. Are you guys opening your patio? Is there anything you want to try new in there? Do you expect an additional par level increase? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's double up. That's why we do our deliveries because we get a chance to talk to them like that. And that's yeah. the, so even though, so I save quote unquote labor on a delivery person and spending labor myself, I just utilize my time efficiently by chatting with them. And for me, it's a lot harder for them to, you know, get rid of my product when they see me every day for two years. Yeah. So, that's it. When you, yep. when you it's easy to have to see a random delivery guy dropping off, you know, every day for me, them to send me, you know, Hey Dave, we're, uh, we're all good at my greens. It's hard to do that because you've developed a relationship. It's a small business. And that reciprocity for what it's not, you know, about manipulates. It's really, we believe in what they do. We want to help them. If they don't need the micro greens, great. Let's drop it off. Let's skip a week. Right. You got the flexibility within that. But for me, if I'm, I'm no service, I do no good for them. If I'm not here long-term, if I'm just right. another, Arm that comes in comes out and they're like okay well it's another guy coming in right so they don't buy microgreens because you're just another one of these local farmers that comes in tries to sell them for two months and then it's gone and they got to have then they have a gap again then they go back to the national distributors and they go yeah. back to and they got to find a new guy the flip-flop is what really kills these guys that's why you see this hesitancy for wanting to meet with local guys because they're not usually reliable to be perfectly honest but you can and it just takes a while to establish that but hey if you say we're going to be there at 10 o'clock on tuesday you're there it'll blow their mind it's like well you actually said we, we showed up it's amazing right yeah. so we didn't come out today you know something happened to the house like we had all the time for local guys in my restaurant where hey sorry something came up like well we need your product okay we'll try to get it out tomorrow we need it today we're an event tonight okay sorry and that was literally my conversation with a lot of guys and yeah. that it permeates right and chefs talk with other chefs build a continual stable relationship with your guys and it's amazing where you'll go in that industry for sure yeah well I mean, even with the big national shooters like U.S. Foods, when I was a line cook, you know, you'd have that truck rolling. It was supposed to be there at like 9.30 a.m. He would show up at like 11.45 and hey. you're like, uh, no. <laughs> you're like, we can't have you come in here. Like my one of my last restaurants, there's no rear door in a, in a huge um, like a complex. And these guys are coming in noon. We've got 100 covers in there. They're oh. pushing clients out of the way. No joke. Like with a dolly coming in there with like 100 pounds of potatoes, there's hay there's crap flying all over. Like, awesome dude thing, really. So we're hand wow. over yeah, the past. We got yeah, it's beautiful, but they just don't care. Like, oh no, we're sorry, we're oh, we're late. I'm like, but this is you know a five thousand dollar bill, right? Yeah. And you have to take the food, right? This is why we do what we do with it. That's why I love restaurants so much. Is you can cultivate a new idea of what an actual local distributor would look like. Right. Cool. Awesome guy.